blonde girl hit the baseball. The Italian accent is fun. It's very melodic, much like the Norwegian accent, but in a different way. And Italian is a Latin accent. So you're going to see similarities between this and say Spanish. This one is distinct though, and I'm going to show you how. But first, let's establish what we already know. The standard American English accent has a resonance that's right in the middle. The Italian accent has a different resonance. For the Italian resonance, you want to push the tongue forward. Let everybody know it is you that is here. Be proud and speak your voice. Let's start with the I sound. For a word like it, in Italian, it's going to get the E sound. For instance, it is in here. It is in here. Yeah. And notice how when he hits each consonant, there's a short burst of air. It's very staccato sounding. Now, the long A and the short E, like gate and get in Italian, is going to sound like get, get. Hear that? They both get the E sound. Now, words that give variations of the U uh sound, like spoon and foot get changed to the oo sound. For instance, I stepped on the spoon with my foot because I was looking up at the moon. Oh no, I stepped on the spoon with my foot because I was looking at the moon. The o and the ah sound get the staccato ah sound. The blonde goat wrote with the magic wand. The blonde goat wrote with the magic wand. The A sound, like you get in cat, and the U sound from butt, get the ah sound. For instance, but the cat is no fun without its hat. But the cat is no fun without the hat. I love the staccato rhythm of the Italian accent, the rising and falling of the pitch to emphasize words, and when they place the uh sound often after consonants in a word amidst a sentence. But when they do this, you'll notice they don't add that uh after a consonant if it's immediately followed by a vowel or if the next word starts with a vowel. For instance, the blonde girl hit the baseball. <laughs> Sounds much better than the blonde girl hit the baseball, doesn't it? Another thing I love about the Italian accent, a lot of times the R just fades away at the end of the word. For instance, refrigerator and complication become refrigerator, complication. If you listen to Italians when they're speaking, there's often that tapped R, not quite the full exaggerated rolled R like you get in accents like Scottish. For instance, Roberto kissed Regina in Rome. Ah, Roberto kissed Regina in Rome. Voiced TH, like the, and the voiceless TH, like truth, both get the D sound. For instance, the birthday of Theodore is on Thanksgiving. The birthday of Theodore is on Thanksgiving. The Z sound gets the S sound mostly at the end of words, as opposed to the beginning. For instance, Josie plays at the zoo sometimes. Josie plays at the zoo sometimes. There it is, the staccato rhythm in the gestures. It's a very active accent. Now, the H, it's silent quite often, the majority of the time. Holy Hannah, Harry, inhaled helium from the balloon. Holy Anna, Harry inhaled the helium from the balloon. Because the standard American English oral posture is different from the Italian accent, 
simple things are going to be different. For instance, quite often when we speak, we stop to think and we say, uh, for lack of a better word, or we're trying to think of the next word. Let me give you an example. I think, uh, that I love learning the Italian accent. I think uh, that I like uh, the Italian accent, no? Beautiful. Now, you got the basics. Take from this foundation and build upon it. Don't forget to start off big. Go over the top. Then you could bring it back down and adjust it to the genre you're speaking to whether it's comedy or drama, go out there and do it without inhibition. I love you. Jack.